One way I love learning how to improve my own marketing is to learn from other people's mistakes. And these are not necessarily mistakes we're gonna go over in today's video, but I am going to audit three distinctly different Pinterest accounts today. One is selling products on Etsy related to the sewing space. One is selling women's clothing and the other is a parenting brand. And these people all specialize in very different areas with very different monetization strategies. So I wanna bring you these three accounts today, Pinterest accounts, to audit and just showcase the foundations of Pinterest, what may be missing, and how these people individually can improve their Pinterest strategies. And I wanna take you along with me because this is a really great way that you can learn if there's any gaps in your own Pinterest marketing strategies, how you can plug those gaps yourself. So without further ado, let's dive into the first Pinterest audit. TKS, this brand is selling women's fashion kimonos, robes, beach and vacation cover-ups, maternity clothing, crop tops, and loungewear. It, I'm pulling all of this from the bio, which we'll talk about. But before we get started on the actual audit, I wanna walk you through the actual aspects of each audit and what I go through. Now, this is the same exact thing I go through in my membership when I audit someone's account in there, or if someone hires me to do a one-off audit of their Pinterest account, which I do, um, maybe one of those a month, I think. It's not something you can really publicly find, but if that's ever something you're interested in and you want an in-depth audit, this is what you're gonna get. So we're gonna start with their display name. Now, one of the things that a lot of people actually don't understand on Pinterest are display names are actually searchable. So when I say that, I mean your brand isn't likely going to be searched for on Pinterest. Therefore, you really wanna sandwich something on to the end of it that is searchable. So if you really want to focus in on women's fashion kimonos, and that's like the main thing that you sell or luxury kimono robes, then you could sandwich that onto the end of your display name. Now take a peek right here in the top right hand corner of my screen. It says Heather and then it says promoted pins and organic digital marketing education. That's what I'm talking about. So when ser people search for promoted pins on Pinterest, I'm gonna come up in that search result right there in the search. So if we were to search for luxury kimono, robes, I'm not actually seeing any users coming up in this search result. But if you were to put your name, so shop TKS, women's luxury kimono robes and loungewear, you would likely come up in this search result. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about, which is not on the audit form, but it's part of your profile, is your overall um, banner, your Pinterest banner. This really is meant to showcase what you do as a brand. And I can see here that you have a, a model wearing one of the kimono robes, and that's great. But I would also love to have in some of this white space just a few words. It's like a call to action or tells people who you are and what you do or what you sell. And that will really help to capture the attention of people here on the screen. Now, two of the examples, the, the other examples that I have today for audits, you can see that they are doing that. And it's very easy for you to do that as well if that is something that you wanted to help people to see what you sell and where they can find you without having to go through the full profile to find that out. Now, moving on down the screen, is my bio filled out? Um, is it filled out with helpful phrases that use keywords and clear on my uh, what I do and what I sell and who I sell to? Sort of. I definitely think that you have good keywords in your bio, but I would love for you to add a small call to action where you are actually telling people to shop your store. So this can be done easily by um, just adding a call to action like shop our full line of women's fashion kimonos, luxurious kimono robes, beach and vacation cover-ups, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, that would add a small call to action to let people know that what you have is actually for sale and this isn't just a, an account that people are looking for or just browsing. That's the only thing that I would add here is usually I do um, Pinterest bios like this, who you help, how you help them, and in what way you're related to how you help them. 
So here's mine. We provide you with the best Pinterest marketing education to help online business owners develop a money-making Pinterest strategy. So throughout this, I have keywords that I want to rank for. And then at the end, it says visit the link in our profile to join our exclusive Pinterest marketing membership where you can begin to up-level your Pinterest marketing strategy today. So this really helps the algorithm to understand who I'm helping. And when people search, the, the bio doesn't come up in search, but the keywords in the bio help the profile show up in search. And if you are adding in how you help them and, and where they can find that information, you're, you are taking them one step further to your store. All right, next up is, are my boards optimized for search? And there's two things here. Are there boards that are public that do not fit my niche and do each of my boards have a fully filled out board description? Now I'm not gonna click into every single one of your boards, but I am gonna click into the boards that I know are important to your brand. So the kimonos, robes, and loungewear. But just really at first glance, all of these pins down here have been added to your profile, but don't actually have a board. And the boards are important for the pins to show up in search. So as you are creating your Pinterest pins and you're using keywords on Pinterest, all of your pins need to be applied to a board. So make sure you come back in and edit each one of these and add them to an actual board. Now, three of your Pinterest boards. Loungewear is way too broad. You're not going to get found in search. And when people search for boards on Pinterest, let me show you how. I'm gonna to toggle this to all pins and just search loungewear. There's a toggle over here for um, searching by videos, boards, profiles, and products. So if I were to search for boards just for the word loungewear, there's no way in on this green earth that you're going to come up in this search. It's way too broad. There's way too many of them. So what I would do instead is amend the loungewear keyword with a keyword that you know is a longer tail and you might actually be able to rank for. So capsule wardrobe loungewear, that might be a really good one. Um, it just depends on what style and what aesthetic and what person you're targeting. And then it looks like you have bamboo. So this might be a sustainable loungewear board. So sustainable, uh, women's sustainable loungewear. Uh, shop our comfortable and elevated loungewear, including bamboo, postpartum, chic and classy, loungewear outfits for all of your loungewear outfit aesthetic mood boards. This description sounds, especially the end, sounds more like um, something that people are wanting to achieve, not necessarily something that you are selling. So we want to make it something that people are actually going to go shop for. I know we have the shop hour, but I would just rephrase this a little bit to be shop our comfortable and elegant. Uh, elevated loungewear, including sustainable bamboo loungewear, because that's probably a keyword. I'm just guessing. Postpartum outfits, chic and classy. And then I would just change this at the end, um, loungewear aesthetic, um, outfits of your dreams, something of that nature to make it less mood boardy and more achievable. Okay. So we need a longer tail keyword on our board titles. I'm just going to take a brief look at these. This one looks better. I definitely can see the keywords that you are looking to target. And I like this board description better than the other one. And I would also encourage you to lengthen this. Women's robes, it's too broad. You sell something so much better than just women's robes that you can pick up at Walmart or Target. What is that keyword? What is that style? Who is this for? And let's look at amending the title of women's robes to be sustainable women's robes or sustainable luxury women's robes. Something of that nature would be a lot better and easier to find and search for those people that are looking for you. All right, two boards I think is enough for the board part. As far as pins that really, like boards that don't really fit your niche, um, Crystals, I don't really see where that fits. It's been 23 weeks since you've pinned to it. Celebrity inspired. I would make sure to add in a main keyword to this for what you sell. So celebrity inspired 
women's kimonos or celebrity inspired kimono outfits, something of that nature. I would do some keyword research on that. Behind the scenes, people aren't really looking for this either. And this is targeting more business owners that are looking for shot lists or inspiration for how to shoot their own products versus people who are buying from you. Gift guides and blogs is definitely one of those boards that you can have. I wouldn't make it gift, gu gift guides and blog posts because people aren't searching for blog posts. They're searching for how to style kimonos and you would have a board for that. But gift guides would be like gift guides for women who love luxury fashion or gift guides for luxury fashion, something of that nature. Okay, overall, I think you've done a, a solid job of getting started. The last thing that I want to look at is, I know your domain's claimed because you have Verified Merchant, um, but the last thing I want to look at are your pins and how you're optimizing them. Now, because you are a storefront and you probably have a Shopify store, all of your pins are actually going to come from the store. So any products that you pin are going to come from the store. So these are going to link to your store and then the individual item. So for some reason, you have a bunch of keywords just stuffed in here, which technically does not violate the spam filters because they are appropriate for the pin, but I don't understand how you haven't been overwritten by the description from your store. So I would rather see you take these keywords and actually make a description with them instead of just doing summer cruise outfits vacation style. People are probably searching for these things and that might come up in search, the summer cruise outfits. That's a really long tail keyword. And I don't see the kimono pins in here per se, but it's definitely relevant. It's not the way that I would phrase my pin titles or pin styles I, or pin descriptions. I would definitely phrase them a little bit more like trendy beach outfits for vacation or, you know, something like this. Um, not like this because people don't care about I, they care about me. Resort vacation outfits, 20 outfits to pack for resorts, how to style kimonos, elegant kimonos to wear on vacation, what to wear on a cruise for ladies over 60, things like that is how I would phrase my pin titles. So I hope that helps to get you started with any gaps or anything that you can fill. Moving on to audit number two. So audit number two comes from a fairly new business owner, fairly new to Pinterest, I believe. Um, they do have their banner set up the way that I prefer. I would instead have, instead of having the brand name in here, I would have a phrase of some sort that helps people to identify because the, the brand name is a little confusing for me to read actually, or to, to pronounce but we have sewing planners and inspo. And then we go on in the bio to, and the domain is claimed. So right here at the top, display name and bio and domain is claimed. So let's pop back over to that account. Domain is claimed. Your display name, I would have a keyword in here that we want people to be searching for to find us. You can probably glean a lot of that from your actual bio here. So, so I am not even going to try. Sewing inspiration. I design beautiful sewing related printables, printable planners, affirmation cards, wall art, calendars, cards, and so much more. So is for life. I would change this a bit and get rid of these two in the front. We don't care about those two things. People, people don't identify with that. And I would get rid of the, the letter I or the word I. Um, we help you by creating sewing related printables, including sew sewing printable planners, sewing affirmation cards, wall art, calendars, and so much more. I would identify what keywords are related to the sewing practice related to printable planners, affirmation cards, wall art, calendars, cards, and sandwich those words together. So affirmation cards for people who love to sew, for women who love to sew, printable planners for sewers. I, what do people call themselves who are into sewing? I don't know, but that's what I would do if I were you. And then I would have a call to action, shop our sewing printables, and then maybe put the other two things 
in the beginning on the end. Okay. Um, display name, I would have your actual brand name and then a line and then something like sewing planters, sewing planners and printables or sewing printable planners for and then whoever you help. That would be a really solid place to start for your display name here. And then I would match or attempt to match the text up here with the display name in the bio. These three things really weave together like a thread when you're sewing. Okay, sorry, I had to do that. All right, so the next thing on the um, audit are the boards optimized for search. Two things here, do I have public boards that don't fit my niche? And are my boards fully filled out? A lot of people lately have been following my advice and actually filling out their boards, which is so great, but there are still a ton of people who don't. So we're gonna find out. So the very first one is free sewing patterns. This is great. I love this. Your board description is filled out. And it says this board is for those looking for free sewing patterns. These free sewing patterns, pattern printables are for beginners. Scroll down to explore more free sewing patterns and free sewing tutorials for tops, dresses, skirts, kids, toys, and much more. So right now it looks like the same sewing pattern. And I would see if you could add maybe a few new um, or alter alternative sewing patterns. I do... Um, clearly I can see what the sewing pattern is. I can identify the keyword that you're trying to target and all of that is really great. I really like this board name. Um, this really bodes well and blends well with the description that you've chosen as well. So let's look at the other one just really quick and I'll then move on to the pins that you're making. So it says sewing project planner free printable. Here are some free sewing project planner printables. They are designed to help you get organized with all your sewing projects and sewing ideas and are easy to print at home. Sewing project planners are important to help you streamline your sewing projects, identify needed supplies and plan steps um, to sewing. Browse through this board to explore more sewing printable planners. I love that. Your description's actually really well filled out. I can identify the keywords that you are targeting. Your board titles are really good. Um, you have a board cover on each of your boards um, as well. And the kimono brand did not have that. So if you're the kimono brand and you're still watching, I would add board covers like this creator has done. And you can see what a board cover looks like right here. This is the board cover. Now let's identify um, any boards on your profile that don't fit just really quickly. And it does not look like you have anything that really doesn't fit. So journal prompt ideas, it's kind of broad, not really in your niche, but I think it's gonna bring people in that are, that are in your niche. So I think that's fine. Printable wall art. I would maybe, add the adjective of sewing printable wall art or printable wall art sewing inspiration or something of that nature to identify that this is for people who enjoy to sew or they're going to put it in their sewing rooms. I think you have a really solid start on your boards. I don't see anything there that I wouldn't identify with. Let's take a peek at one of your Pinterest pins and just make sure that you're following best practices here. So best practice is a full pin title with a keyword. So free full skirt sewing pattern. And then if you're looking for the perfect free circle skirt pattern and see, I wonder if you, if this is a, a circle skirt, if that's the actual, you need to put that in the title as well. This full circle skirt pattern is free sewing, um, a four PDF, skip the circle skirt calculator and tutorial and start sewing today. To create this wardrobe essential, click to download the free sewing skirt pattern in your size. Um, I think this is great. And then you have one hashtag that's been cut, cut off and it's one of the same keywords that you're using in the description. Hashtags are okay to use if you want to use them. They become clickable and become not clickable at times. I would prefer you use them as keywords first and then add hashtags later if that's something you're interested in doing. They are not necessary. I know I'm gonna get comments on this. They are not necessary. Okay, I think you've done a really good job with your Pinterest pins, the way that you're optimizing them. Um, I will say to make sure that you actually don't just upload your board covers to Pinterest with a dead link. Let's link this to the free sewing pattern that you're giving away. And let's also use the board description for the pin description for the board cover. 
All right, moving on, any other notes or anything like that for you? I don't really think so. I think you've followed my videos probably pretty extensively. Um, and I can see that you've got uh, followers starting to grow and monthly views starting to grow. I would just encourage you to keep going. Okay, final audit of the day is the one that I accidentally clicked off of. And it's Lindsay and her brand name is called A Heart for All Students. And she helps families with neurodivergent kids. So basically she's got a big job and um, she's actually a student of mine and she's been a student of mine for years. She's been with me since 2020. I think she actually even hired me for a one-off Pinterest audit in 2019 maybe. It's been a really long time. But what I want to go through is just her account just like everyone else. So the first thing, first things first is your display name. A Heart for All Students is your brand name. I would probably challenge you to use some of your main keywords that you are using in your board, uh, your banner and your description here, your bio as your display name. So you come up in search. So support and tools for neurodivergent moms and kids or something along those lines. Like how are you helping people and in what way? Is there a main keyword for that that we can actually swap out for the brand name instead of taking up the space with the name that no one is searching for? Okay, your brand uh, is or your website is obviously claimed. It has been for a long time. Your bio, support and tools for neurodivergent moms, kids, and families, ADHD, autism, anxiety, sensory processing, and dyslexia, homeschooling whole brain teaching. There's a lot in here that I would probably peel out and then just prioritize other phrases. So what are the main things that you help with? And can we write sentences around those instead of just sandwiching all of our keywords in here? Now, it's not 100% necessary for you to write full sentences. I just think people connect when you can tell more of a story through your keywords and how you help them and, and exactly how you do that. Um, so if you wanna keep your bio like this, I'm, I'm not hating it. If you wanna do that, that's fine. I would just encourage you to see if you could write sentences around those. Okay, next thing on the list are your boards. Again, are there any public boards that don't fit my niche and do my boards have descriptions? I have not looked at your boards in a really long time. I don't know what's going on over here, um, but it looks like one of your boards for this um, preschool and early learners, you created it 12 weeks ago, but you haven't done anything with it. I would just make this secret. Just for anyone watching, I like to make boards publicly available for viewing after they have at least one board cover applied and one to two pins that link back to my website. Until that point, I just keep them secret so they don't just look like empty placeholders or second thought. Okay, so we are going to look at this border right here, autism parenting, adult ADHD and women and ADHD strategies. These are the boards we're gonna take a peek at. So autism parenting resources, I definitely think some there are people searching for that on the internet. Now, one thing I noticed on the sewing account and I've also noticed here are pins within sections. Now remember, sections are not searchable, but boards are searchable. So I would actually make this section its own board, give it its own description and it has all of its own content. So instead of making sections within boards, they should just be standalone boards. Okay, brain-based support and tools for uh, moms parenting and homeschooling autistic children. This falls flat for me and also the algorithm. So brain-based support and tools for homeschooling moms or moms homeschooling autistic children. Parenting autistic kids with trauma-informed strength-based neurodiversity model for mental health, spiritual health, behavioral. I think the rest of this is fine. I can definitely identify the keywords that you're using and you, are, you do have it in sentence format. I would just encourage you to rewrite your sentences so they sound more like full thoughts and not just keywords in a line with a period on the end. That's, that's my only advice for that one. But I can definitely tell what keywords you are targeting here. Sensory processing and social emotional learning tools for who? For what? 
for when, for why. ADHD, adult ADHD in women, definitely a search term people are looking for. This might end up in safe search just so people are aware what safe search is. Safe search is when you search for a term and all the filters are removed. So earlier when I was looking for um, luxury loungewear or the loungewear stuff, this all these bubbles and filters and things show up. But then if I were to search for ADHD in women, I don't know. Yes, this is safe search. So essentially, you have to be really clear on what your keywords are because there are no filters. People do not have guided search. There are no related search terms or anything like that sandwiched within the results. So you have to be really clear on who you're helping and how you're helping them and making sure that each of the, the keywords you're using in descriptions and in your content fit. Um, okay, support for women with adult ADHD. I think you actually have quite a lot of keywords in here that you are wanting to rank for. I would just encourage you again to rewrite these things with sentences in mind um, and how people would actually read this um, and how it's going to come across to them when they read it. Okay. Last board is the one with kids, same deal. Let's, instead of just sandwiching our keywords in there, let's actually use our sentences. Um, I know you're a really good writer because you have a really, really popular ADHD blog um, and like just neurodivergent blog in general. So use your writing skills and let's edit this a little bit more. But I can definitely tell what keywords you are trying to rank for and that's great. Okay. Next up on the audit list is the pins and are they optimized for search? Now I already know your domain is claimed and I think I mentioned that earlier. So let's just pop into one of these pins and just see here, we got ADHD paralysis, five ways to overcome uh, ADHD paralysis, five ways to overcome and save your sanity. I actually really like that title. Uh, what is ADHD paralysis? Ever find yourself so overwhelmed? ADHD in women is not easy, especially with demands. Okay. I really like your description. This is really good. I have no qualms about this. Keep doing that. Um, this one, let's see. How to support motor skill development in autism. Um, did you know... Post learn about the relationships. Okay. I really don't have any anything here either. I really like how you use a call to action at the end that is very warm and inviting. It's not just like read the blog post. It's support your amazing autistic child with the tools they need to thrive. And then they're gonna click through and read the post. Um, on mobile, they're gonna have a button that says like visit or read now. So I really like this um, as well. Okay, overall, I think all of the accounts that I've audited today have um, a little bit of work to do, mainly with just the way that you format sentences and descriptions on Pinterest, making them reader friendly. Let's always think about the reader when we are um, writing content for Pinterest and for Pinterest pins. Um, people are not here for I, me, my, they are here for myself. They're not here for you. They're here for themselves. Okay. I like just one really quick way to end this is I do like your banner and how you are, you have it structured here and you have, um, your course information here. I would just maybe change this to, um, sick of daily battles. There's a, a better way and then point to the course, you know, enroll now or visit maybe put the call to action over here with the word visit above visit a heart for all students.com to find out how or visit a heart for all students.com to find a better way and then you're utilizing both of these elements on the design for one really strong call to action remember to not put any text behind your face here it's gonna block it off okay i think that's it i hope you guys have found this audit to be helpful remember the things that you really need to focus on for your overall Pinterest strategy is having a solid keyword plan. Your keyword plan then informs your board strategy and the keywords that you're gonna use for board titles and board descriptions. And that also informs your Pinterest pin strategy or your creative strategy, 
which is going to include your pin title, the text overlay you're gonna use on your Pinterest pins, like what Lindsay has done here. This is going to um, be Im impacted by your keyword plan and then the Pinterest description and as well as the board that you put it on. Remember, all of those things are connected. If you have any questions or if you want to learn more about Pinterest SEO and Pinterest board strategies, make sure to visit the um, videos on my YouTube channel. I have a really good masterclass for both of those topics that you can watch and implement. Now that you've learned from other Pinterest accounts with these audits and you can see the potential of what I can help you with, if you are interested, you can definitely come and join us in Pin Profit Academy where you can get my eyeballs and feedback on your Pinterest account for as little as $37 a month. If that's not something that you can do right now or you're not ready for, then I would highly encourage you to check out these videos on this Pinterest marketing playlist for your next steps.